In this video, we're going to study the Really Ritz method. The first step to find a solution using the Really Ritz method is to assume a polynomial approximate solution that satisfies the stability boundary conditions. The second step is to write the expression of the potential energy of the system in terms of the approximate solution. The third step is to minimize the expression of the potential energy of the system with respect to the unknowns in the approximate solution. We're going to apply the Rayleigh Ritz method to two types of beams, the Euler Bernoulli beam and beams under axial load. For each, the first step is the same assume a polynomial for the unknown displacement. For the Euler Bernoulli beam, the displacement is the vertical display or the lateral displacement. For the beams under axial load, it's the horizontal displacement. The essential boundary conditions for stability are different. For the Euler Bernoulli beam, the boundary conditions that need to be satisfied are those for the displacement and the rotation. For beams under axial loading, they are the boundary conditions for the horizontal displacement only. The second step is to write the potential energy of the system as a function of the unknown coefficients in the displacement. For the Euler Bernoulli beam, the potential energy of the system is given by this equation as studied previously, and for beams under axial loading, it's given by this equation as studied previously. The third step is to find the remaining unknown coefficients in the polynomial function, which satisfy the minimization of the potential energy, which is partial potential energy by partial A0 equals 0, by partial A1 equals 0, by partial A2 is equal to 0, and so on. So we're going to look at this method applied to a bar under axial load. So we have a bar of length 2 aligned with the coordinate axis x1. The width of the bar is constant at 250 mm, while the height varies linearly, and it's equal to 500 mm at the support and equal to 250 mm at the other end. The bar has a constant force of value 200 newton applied at the end x1 equal to 2 m. So right here, we have a force equal to 200 newton. The bar is fixed at the end when x1 equals 0. We need to find the displacement of the bar by directly solving the differential equation of equilibrium and then using the really Ritz method assuming a polynomial of the degrees 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we want to try all these different polynomials to see what we get for an approximate solution. We are going to assume that the bar is linear elastic with Young's smallness of 100,000 Pascal, and the small strain tensor is the appropriate measure of strain. Of course, we are going to ignore the effect of Poisson's ratio, so we can solve things by hand, when we are going to compare the solution obtained using the really Ritz method with the exact solution. We're going to follow what we've done before for beams under axial loading to find the exact solution. This is the differential equation. The area is changing, and so we have this differential equation and the unknown is the displacement u1 the area is equal to the width multiplied by the height and the height varies according to the equation 0.5 minus 0.25 over 2 multiplied by x1 there are two boundary conditions for this differential equation the first one is at x1 equals 0 I have the horizontal displacement is 0 and at x1 equal L I have the stress is given by the force divided by the area when x1 equal L, and the stress is equal to E multiplied by the strain, and the strain is du1 by dx1. Plugging this equation with the boundary conditions in Mathematica, I get the solution. The stress sigma on 1 is equal to 6400 divided by 4 minus x1, and the horizontal displacement u1 is equal to this logarithmic function. I'm going to put the exact solution on the side and then try to find an approximate solution using the Rayleigh Ritz method. As a reminder, the potential energy of the system for a beam under axial load is equal to the integral of Ea over 2 multiplied by epsilon 1, 1 squared, where epsilon 1, 1 is du1 by dx1, all integrated over the length from 0 to L, minus the work done by the external forces. Here, we only have one force that will be doing work, which is P multiplied by the horizontal displacement at x1 equal L. First, let's 
try a polynomial of the first degree. We are not going to try a polynomial of a zero degree, which states u1 is equal to a0, simply because we have the condition that when x is zero, the horizontal displacement is zero, which will force the constant to be zero, so we're not going to consider a polynomial of the zero degree. We're only going to consider a polynomial of the first degree. u1 is equal to a0 plus a1 x1, and we're looking for a value for a1 and a0. We're now going to apply the boundary conditions of stability, or the essential boundary conditions, for beams under axial loading, and these are at x1 equals zero, the horizontal displacement is zero. This boundary condition will force the constant a0 to be equal to zero. So now I got rid of a0, and then the displacement is now a function of only one unknown, a1. So I'm assuming that now the horizontal displacement is a1 x1. The associated strain is du1 by dx1, which is equal to a1. Substituting in the potential energy of the system, ea over 2 a1 squared dx1, integrated from 0 to L, minus the force multiplied by the displacement evaluated at x1 equal L, the displacement is equal to a1x1, and so when we put x1 equal L, we get a1L. Putting the value for a inside the integral, we end up with this equation. After evaluating the integration, and then taking the first derivative of tension energy with respect to a1 equating it to 0, we get the equation 18750a1 is equal to 400. And so, since we found a value for a1, we found an equation for the horizontal displacement, 8 over 375x1, and sigma on 1 is equal to 6400 divided by 3. And notice that the approximate solution, it's far from the exact solution. The stress is constant, while the stress is not constant in the exact solution. However, you can see from the numbers that it's kind of an average value for the stress. And so the approximate solution gets an average value of the stress depending on the function that you assume for the horizontal displacement. As a better approximation, we're going to assume the displacement to have three constants, a0, a1, and a2. Applying the essential boundary condition, at x1 equals 0, the horizontal displacement equals 0, I can get rid of one of the constants, so I get rid of a0, a0 is equal to 0 in this case. And so the horizontal displacement becomes a1x1 plus a2x1 squared. The associated strain epsilon 1 is du1 by dx1, which is a1 plus 2a2x1. The potential energy of the system is equal to the integral of ea over 2 multiplied by the strain squared minus the force multiplied by the horizontal displacement evaluated at x1 equal l. It's the force multiplied by the displacement of this point. And so when I substitute l for x1, I get a1l plus a2l squared. Doing the integral, I get this equation as a function of a1 squared, a1, a2, a2 squared, a1, and a2. In order to find appropriate values for a1 and a2, I will take the first derivative of the potential energy with respect to a1 equated to 0, the first derivative of the potential energy with respect to a2 and equated to 0, I get two equations in a1 and a2, and usually these equations are going to be linear, so they can be solved easily. And so finding a1 and a2 that would satisfy those two equations will make the potential energy of the system minimum. And so by solving those two equations, we get a value for a1 and a value for a2. And so the horizontal displacement becomes this equation. And the stress is equal to the first derivative or is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by the strain. And the strain is the first derivative of u1 with respect to x1. So we get this equation for sigma 1, 1. A better approximation would be a polynomial of the third degree, a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x1 squared plus a3x1 cubed. Again, we're going to continue the process. First, satisfy the essential boundary conditions, so we'll get rid of a0. The displacement becomes a1x1 plus a2x1 squared plus a3x1 cubed. The associated strain, just take the derivative of a1 with respect to x1. Write the potential energy of the system, do the integration, get a large equation function of a1, a2, and a3. 
and the next step is to minimize that expression by finding the derivative of potential energy with respect to each of these constants and equating that to zero. By taking the derivative of the potential energy with respect to each of these constants, A1, A2, and A3, and equating that to zero, we get three equations in three unknowns. Solving these three equations, we get value for A1, another value for A2, and another value for A3, and we substitute and we get a nice expression for the horizontal displacement and another expression for the stress. So let's look at the comparison between these solutions. So here you have in front of you, this is this polynomial of the first degree, polynomial of the second degree, third degree, and the exact solution. You can see that the polynomial for the displacements, the exact solution is actually hidden under u3 because u3 and, and in fact u2, they are already giving me a very uh, a solution that's really very close to the exact solution. So I'm able to approximate the displacement of the beam, which is a logarithmic function. I'm able to approximate it using a polynomial of the second degree or a polynomial of the third degree. A polynomial of the first degree, which is a linear function, is not as good as the other two. Let's look at the stresses. The exact solution is the blue line. You could see if I use a polynomial of the first degree for the displacement, I get a constant stress. So I get some sort of an average stress distribution. If I use a polynomial of the second degree, I get a linear stress. A third degree, when I use the third degree, the stress was closer to the exact solution. And so you can see that the approximate solution gives me better approximation for the displacement, but I need higher order of degrees to be able to approximate the stresses. I will now show you how to use Mathematica to solve these problems. First, we're going to do the exact solution, and we've done this before. Here, we set the area as a function of x, Young's modulus, the length, and the force, and then solve the differential equation. This is the differential equation. Young's modulus multiplied by the second derivative of u of x, multiplied by the area, plus Young's modulus multiplied by the first derivative of u multiplied by the first derivative of a, double equals zero, and then the two boundary conditions. The first one is the stress at the end L is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by the strain. So the strain is u prime or of L is equal to the force divided by the area when x is equal to L. And the second boundary condition is the u of zero equals zero. And so after solving the differential equation, I extract the solution. So I extract from S the set of the solution. I extract it and I put it into the value u and the stress is equal to E, the first derivative of u, which is E multiplied by the strain. For the first degree, we set the horizontal displacement is equal to A1 multiplied by X and we're looking for the value of A1. We write the potential energy of the system, integrate half Young's modulus multiplied by the area, multiplied by the first derivative of u1 with respect to x squared, minus the force, multiplied by the horizontal displacement, evaluated when x is equal to l. Then we write the equation 1, which is the first derivative of the potential energy with respect to 1, and we solve that this equation has to be equal to 0, and we solve for the value of a1. And after we find the value of a1, a1 is equal to 8 over 375. After we find a1, we set u1 after we take utilize that solution in S or that set of solutions, and the stress is equal to e multiplied by the first derivative of u1 with respect to S. And so this is u1, and this is the stress. Similarly, for the second degree, now I'm going to set the value as u2, just store it in a different variable u2 is equal to a1x plus a2x squared, and I'm looking for a1 and a2. I'm going to write the potential energy, integrate half Young's modulus, multiplied by the second derivative of u2 with respect to x squared, multiplied by the area, minus the force multiplied by the displacement, which is u2, evaluated when x is equal to l. Now we have two equations, the first derivative of the potential energy with respect to a1, the first derivative of potential energy with respect to a2, and I need to solve these two equations. So solve 
equation one equal to zero, equation two double equal to zero, and find the two coefficients a1 and a2. And so after finding these, store the solution in S and use it for U2. So now U2 is equal to U2 after utilizing the solution for A1 and A2. And now the stress is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by the set first derivative of U2 with respect to X. This is the value for the horizontal displacement and this is the value for the stress. Again, continue the same process. U3, third degree, three constants. Write the potential energy. Set three equations, solve the three equations equal to zero, find a1, a2, and a3, store them in the solution S, then replace a1 and a2 and a3 with the solution in the value for u3, and find the associated stress. Finally, I can use the plot command to compare the uh, four different displacements, the exact displacement u, u1, u2 and u3, which are the approximate solutions using a linear, a quadratic, and a cubic polynomial. The plot legend is important to uh, differentiate between the different curves. So I have an exact u1, u2, and u3. The axes label are important to identify the unit for the vertical axes and the horizontal axis. I also use it to plot, I use the same command to plot the stresses the exact solution for the stress, stress 1 and stress 2 and stress 3. And you can find the plots in your online notes.